Planning for a residential situation, uh, and I'll sp speak specifically initially of an off-grid installation because that's actually the most complex uh, situation. Uh, the reason I say it's most complex is we start out without knowing really how much power we're talking about. The customer has an idea, that is, I want to live off-grid, but we haven't talked about square footage, family size, uh, where are they living? At 3,500 feet in the Sierra Nevada, you may not need air conditioning. Uh, lower elevations, air conditioning. And certainly in the Central Valley, air conditioning is going to be requirements. So we serve a very wide range of locations from mountain, mountain top to uh, valley floor. So all of these physical things in terms of just plain, where are you? What's it like? Is it dry, hot? These have to be taken into account, and we start to have to deal with the customer needs from the ground floor up. And that would be obviously water and, of course, environmental comfort, cooling and heating. Establishing the power requirements involves, essentially for me, and I want to say this, this is important to me, I find it's a personal interview, a personal narrative, and almost a story where we develop a story, and we go back and forth. And I may tell the customer, I'm sorry, but what you're suggesting is going to take you to the poorhouse. Let me suggest a couple of other ways. And so we negotiate uh, because there are some, you know, electric heating, for instance, is probably not going to be your option. Baseboard heating, is, as maybe attractive it is in certain ways, is not going to actually develop, be, be energy efficient. So these are the issues, particularly for the off-grid, is basically the energy scenario. All the while, keep in mind, we have to be extremely efficient. Uh, being off-grid, electricity, your off-grid electricity costs you probably at least double what the best grid-connected supply of electricity. And this is whether it's solar on-grid or solar off-grid, the cost of the installation, the cost of developing your electricity off-grid is going to be higher. That's just a reality. Other, other questions for any customer, but specifically off-grid, is again, family size, square footage, what are their inclinations temperament-wise? Are they going to be are they solid green energy minimalists or are they people who tell me right away, I want to be comfortable. We can do it, but I need to know this. We need to be honest. And getting this story down is the most important part. Then we can start to put numbers on that. So getting the story right allows us then to put, go back and start to put in good numbers. Good numbers are going to give us a good design, and a good design means performance, expected performance that the customer is going to be happy with and then I'm happy. So that's the off-grid scenario. The on-grid scenario is simpler in the sense that we already have a record of what they've been doing and that is their electric bill. Uh, like it or not, that is a strong telltale about your energy use. And we can look at the cumulative record. Typically, we simply look at the last 12 months. That gives us uh, access to, the first of all, the rate information, what you've been being charged from the utility. It also gives us monthly totals, how it fluctuates from month to month. And then inside of each month, we can see the distribution of electricity as, as it's charged by the utility. One of the most important things that many people don't understand is for the grid-connected customer, your utility rate structure is by far more important in design in, in terms of designing deciding the size of your power system, your off, your solar's power system, than the solar technology. I really think that that is something that's been lost. Is that rate design and rate cost are controlling or should have much more effect on the customer's choices on system design. Too much, in a sense, there is too much going on right now with people just being told they need a system of so much size. A company may say, you use so much power and a solar system this big would provide that. Uh, my issues with that is they are not really tuned in to the rate issue and when you 
dial in or use the rate issue as a significant component in your system design, then you start off presenting the customer with a most cost-effective design. Now, if we move forward from that point, having established what is a cost-effective design, a, a design that recognizes the, the rate structure that PG&E or your utility is charging, then we can intelligently adapt. We can go a bit larger if you want to, or we can go smaller. But by having a reference based upon what I call a rate analysis and energy analysis, we can be more intelligent making choices going forward or backward. So that's something I think is very important, is understand, having the customer understand it's not just kilowatt hours, but also utility rates and the intertac interaction uh, of the utility rate structure and your consumption pattern that ultimately determines your rates. Um, I think that's, that's the fundamental. We can, as I say, we've already touched on kilowatt hours and patterns of use and ultimately the solar system that you buy from offline solar is going to produce so many kilowatt hours per year. That's whether you're on grid or off grid and your satisfaction fundamentally as an offline customer is going to be based upon, come down to this fact, is do you feel the system is doing what it was supposed to do? This takes me all the way, all the way back to this initial story that we, I'm talking about. I will be happy, you will be happy, if this was a good story and we matched this with good engineering, then we have a successful, happy customer and a happy offline solar.